Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make a uh, tic tac toe game using WindowsForm.net and C Sharp. Let's take a look at a demo of this game. So, in the game, we have nine buttons, right? And you also have a restart button, two labels to show how the CPU and the how many wins the CPU and the player has. So, I'll just go and pick a um, button here. So, the see, the way the CPU works is through with the timer. So, we have a list of buttons. So, all these buttons are listed inside the code and the CPU will randomly select a enable button from here. So it's not making a intelligent decision, it's just picking a random button. So it's a lot easier for us to sort of have a very basic CPU to play with. So I'm just gonna pick a random one. Okay, so once the CPU makes a uh, connection, it tells the CPU wins, and then you can see the CPU wins get, uh, label gets updated here. And then I'll select one here and then Okay, and now I've connected these three, so it shows the player win. So uh, at any one point, if you want to restart the game as well, you can just click on restart, and it will restart the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this project in Visual Studio. This window, uh, we're just going to click on creating a project. I'm going to pick the Windows Form.net. Uh, name this project. Um, .NET 6 is fine. Let's go and create. Okay, so this is the empty window. Let's go ahead and let's fix the title of this one. So say, tic tac toe game, wind forms, more ICT. Right, I'm just gonna make this slightly smaller because we don't need a window that large. So at the moment, I can just make it into 500 by 500. And that would be, this would be fine. Okay, so a couple of things we're going to need first is a label. Let's select a label here. Um, go to the font option. Let's make it 12 bold. And this one can be for player. Oh. This one can be for player wins. Let's do them. Copy and paste that over here. And this is going to be with the CPU. CPU. So we can also change the back color of the player to green, and sorry, four color to green, and um, four color of the other one to uh, red. Back green is fine. Excellent. Right, so let's go and our buttons here. So all the buttons are going to be one side so we're just going to make one button first and then hopefully change that um, copy that over to all of them okay so in this particular um, point we don't need to name the buttons so <coughs> i've just added a um, text with a question mark inside if i go to the font option on this one and change that to say about 24 yeah 24 so it's large enough okay so i'm going to copy and paste that right next to each other here So yeah, this would be okay. I think I can make the button slightly bigger. So use the space around it basically. Okay, so I'm gonna select all three, hold control and drag them down. So it just makes copies of them. And I can just select all of them again. And just move it up a little bit. I might have made the buttons too big. slightly closer to each other okay 
Okay, so these are the buttons, um, all nine buttons now done. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just checking the name over here. I just want to make sure they are right, perfect. Nine, that's good. Okay, so now we're going to need one last button, which is for the restart. This one, restart game. Change the font to just bold, and maybe I'll give this one a back color. That's fine. And just align it with the middle button here. <clears throat> just pressing the arrow key down, so it just makes a little bit of a space. So I don't accidentally click on that one if I want to select this button here. All right. Um. So one of the other things we're going to need is a timer. Let's try and drop a timer here. So I'm going to call this one game timer. Or we're going to call it CPU timer. That's better. Okay, um, I'm going to change the interval to 1000 because it's just going to do one click a second and then it'll stop itself. <laughs> okay, uh, with that being done, um, so now what we want to do is we want to add, start adding the events. So first of all, I'm going to click on the, uh, while the timer is selected, just go to the events window here. Call this event CPU move. So when it's CPU's move, it can just do its, um, have its go. Right, so the CPU move gets added here. Let's go back to the window. I'm going to select all the buttons, the player ones. Just make sure not to select the restart one along with it. All right, inside the click one, say um, player click button, right? And then press enter. So the player click button, that one. So th that's when the player is interacting with the button. Okay, let's click on the restart one and just say restart game like so. Okay, so these are the three events. Let's make two more functions that we need. Okay, private void check game. And we need another independent function. Restart game. Those are it. Let's go and do our variable. So um, one of the things we're going to need for this one is something called an enum. So a enum is sort of like a custom data type, if you will, right? So we don't have to uh, use like strings or integers to determine which is player, if it's player zero, zero, one, or in a string, we can simply say X and O is a sort of data type because those are the two data that we're gonna use. Let's do a public enum like so, and then we're gonna call this one player. All right after that, we need to do the curly brackets. Okay, and then inside of here, we can say X and O. Okay, so the enum is going to have two values, x or o. So it can be either one at any one time. It can't be both. Okay, and because this is seen as a data type, we can create a variable with that data type. Right, so we can say player, current player, like so. Okay, and then we will need a random. That's fine. So random, random, new random is okay. Um, we need an integer for player win count zero. Integers are for CPU win count zero as well. Okay, so these are the variables that we need. Inside the main form constructor, let's set the restart game here. So when the game loads, we want the game to be reset. I think now uh, let's go do the restart function. So the, in the restart function, first we're going to need to create a list of buttons. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all these buttons here inside of that list. Okay, so I just say list button buttons equals new list. Okay, and then inside of here we can just say which button that we actually want. Okay, so we do the curly brackets next to it. We say button one, button two. Button three, button four, button five, six, seven, eight, and lastly button nine because we have nine buttons. 
Okay, well, after that, we just need to do a for each loop to go through each of these buttons, right? So we're going to say a button here, and then we'll call the button X for now, and then in buttons, right? So inside the buttons, any button that exists, we're just going to say um, X to enable is equal to false. So we, oh, sorry, X to enable is equal to true. So we want to enable them. So this is if the game has been played already, then we can just enable all of them. And then we can say x dot text is equals to a question mark. And then x dot back color is going to be equals to uh, default back color. Okay. So just to try this out for now, uh, what we'll do is we can go here and select all of these like so. Then just change the text to this and then change the back color to something else. Okay, so as you can see, although I've changed them, right, as soon as the restart function runs, it resets all of them to the default. Okay, so that's what we actually wanted to do. Right, I'm just gonna undo that. that looks... Okay, so notice that we're not resetting the wins or losses in the restart function. That's because we want to keep track of how many games were played by the player and the CPU, and you know how many players, um, how many games each of them won. Okay, for now let's do the player click event. So inside the player click click event, because we got all um, nine of these buttons linked to the same event. We need to identify which button is the sender of the click. Okay, so we create a variable here called button equals to capital B. So we are casting with the class, right? So we want to find out which button is actually the sender of this one, and then we can say current player equals to player dot x. Okay. So this is how the enums actually work with us, right? Because this is an instance of, uh, this is a data type of the player, right? And then we can simply say player X or player O, right? Not zero O, right? So it actually comes up with it on the thingy as well, on the helper menu as well, okay? So we want the player to be played as X and the CPU to be playing as O. Now let's go to say button dot text is gonna be equals to, um, current player dot two string, right? So we're just converting that information, that X information to a string. Okay. So button dot enabled is equals to false because we want to disable the button when it's been clicked. So it cannot be clicked again or played again in the same position. Okay, button dot back color, dot color dot um, cyan. Yeah, that would work. So we can say, you know, so as soon as the so this way we can differentiate which button the player clicked and which button the um, uh, CPU clicked. Okay, so what we need to do is basically link, uh, remove the buttons that are pressed by the player from that list. But uh, because we declared it as a local variable, we might need to change that to a uh, global one. So what I'll do is I'll copy this part here, and then I'll declare it over here, right as buttons. So that's will be a um, global one which we can access from other functions because if it's still inside this function we won't be able to access it so what i'll do here is then i'll just enable that so that way it's still being used from there right and that's fine okay so if i run this game now it still should work right so as you can see it's, um, it's running the loop and everything right and i can press it and it's disabling them and it's changing the color on them as well Okay, now um, because what we what we don't want is the CPU picking the exact same button as the player, so we want to reduce the choice as the time goes by, right? So the reason I've made this one global now is because then we can remove um, the selected button, the button that's sending the event from that list. Okay, so let's say buttons the remove button. Okay, so that way. Now the CPU and the player cannot select the same one that's already been selected before. Once that's been done, we can just say check game. 
okay run the check game function so that can check you know if um, any of the three buttons have matched in a similar pattern and then what we'll do is if it hasn't we're just gonna say CPU timer dot start okay so then the CPU can go make its move from there um, yeah that's fine and inside the restart function we're just basically gonna say restart game like so so whenever the button is clicked it's just gonna restart the game based on what it is okay so if us try that now again can okay, select one of these and then so now I click restart game and goes into it okay. so now let's do the CPU bit because I want to see how the CPU actually moves when after the players get done with it okay so first we're going to check if buttons dot count is greater than zero so if it still has some um, values inside of the list right and that's when we're going to run this because if all the buttons have been selected then none of uh, nothing else it, um, exists inside of it then we don't necessarily need to um, you know run the CPU anymore because the game is at this point over okay so let's call this one int index equals to random dot next buttons dot count so however many buttons is available we're going to select a random um, number between them and then store it inside the index okay and then we're going to in okay let's do the index dot enabled equals false is fine okay and then we'll do a current player is equals to player dot o so before this uh, the player was x now the CPU is a O. Okay. Buttons uh, index. Actually, we don't need the enable part now. Um, what we need is dot text. So current player dot two string, and then index dot back color equals to color dot um i think it's just dark salmon yeah let's select the dark salmon color okay and then buttons to remove it remove at index that's fine so uh, once it's selected it it dis disable it it'll change the text change the back color and then it'll remove it from the list okay and then we'll also run the check game function here and then after that we we'll just say CPU timer dot stop. We just want this timer to stop at this point. So with that done, I'm just gonna go on and run this again. Let's see if the CPU shows up. So select something. Here we are. Select something else. Okay, and then I can restart the game as well. Select something else. So now comes the last bit. Um, this one we're gonna have like two big if statements inside of this one, okay? So just bear with me with this. Um, so what we know so far is if um, certain patterns are matched in the game, so say for example, between if button one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, eight, nine is matched with an X, then the player wins. Also, if it's, uh, I think this is one, five, nine, right? And seven, five, three, and if those are matched right then the player wins okay and so we're going to put all of this logic inside of the uh, if statement so if any of these conditions are matched when the game um, game is being checked then obviously the player either the player is going to win or the cpu is going to win so we can just do two if statements here one with the if and one with the else if okay so let's get to it all right so we're going to say yeah, button one dot text is equals equals x And button to dot text and equals equals x as well and equals equals button buttons. Oh we're gonna wait. Okay, put here and then x as well. Okay, so if those three are matched, right, then 
you know the player is going to win obviously but because it's going to be a big if statement we need to go ahead and do some more okay so right here you can do two pipe symbols to sort of show that or so we're not just looking for one thing we're also looking for the other one so just to save some time i'm going to copy and paste this line here and put it in there okay and this is going to be two No, uh, not sorry, two. Um, this one's going to be four, five, and six. Two, four, five, and six. Okay, and then do another all. You can do seven, eight, or nine. Okay, and then we need to do another all here. So now we've done the horizontal one. Let's do the vertical one. So vertical one is going to be between one, four, and seven. Okay, so if we one, four, actually, oh. one, four, seven. Okay, and then two, five, eight. We have got two, five, eight. Okay. And then right after that, we got three, six, and nine. We got three, six, nine. Okay. All right, and then we have the two diagonal ones. So we can do all here and say one, five, and nine. One is fine. Let's do number five. And let's do number nine here. Okay, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll have eight conditions, so that will be the last one here. Okay, three, five, and seven. Three, five, Seven. Okay, so if any of these conditions are met, then we basically going to say, okay, you know, we're okay to end the game. Okay, and now let's do the else if. Okay, good thing about doing all this, I can just copy and paste all of this and then just change it to the other one. So right now it still says X, so we're just going to change that to an O. So now with that done, uh, we can actually do the condition. So if these are met, what to do, right? So uh, basically, if any of these are meets, so first thing we want to do is we want to stop the CPU timer, right? So we want to stop the timer because we don't want the timer to run anymore. And then we can say message box to show. So inside of here, we can say, oh, player wins. And then we're gonna give the title here. So it says, says, yes, says, okay, no, it says player wins. That's fine. And obviously, we're gonna say player wins. Oh. Player win count plus plus. So we're gonna add one to the player win count and to label one, which is for the player. We just add it to the label here okay and then right after that we're just going to restart the game again so so we're just going to restart the game again at this point okay and if the cpu wins we're going to do exactly a similar thing here so we're just going to copy and paste that and put it in here 
So I'm gonna obviously stop the timer, message box to say CPU wins this time, and then this one's going to be the CPU win count. And then this will be CPU win count as well. Okay. So the player one and the CPU one is pretty much the same except for just a few um, variable difference here. Okay, so what we can do now is, uh, well, nothing much to do other than testing it out, I guess. Let's click on run. Okay, so let's see if I can win. Okay, so I'm in here and then it restarts. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can make the CPU win. Okay, good. So CPU wins in that direction there. Okay, but CPU wins one did not show up here. Oh, that's because they're going to label two there. So I didn't put label two. And then we should do the CPU wins here. Okay, so I made the mistake of uh, keeping that as label one, right? Because CPU one is label two, right? So it needs to show up there. Let's try it again. So either way, it's going to win. So CPU wins. Okay, now it shows up. Nice. Okay, I win as well and then it shows up here okay so this has been a very simple tutorial on how to create a tic-tac-toe game using Windows form and .NET I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you on the next one